Uh, well, I'm just going to begin by asking if, if watching this film back was quite an emotional experience for you to see this, this bear brought to life on the big screen. Is it very emotional? I think probably the biggest emotional moment, though, was when I first saw the, the first image of Paddington when they were creating him for the film. And it was like seeing somebody that was so real to me was suddenly there on the screen. It was very special. But do, not, to, to, not to counteract the, the sort of emotional side to it, but I mean, do you also feel quite protective over it, quite precious about Paddington? And, and do you, you almost, uh, not, not sort of um, guilty until proved innocent, if that's, no, I'm not even sure which way around that is. Uh, but I mean, when you watch it, do you, are you almost kind of a bit suspicious to begin with and it needs to win you over? So well, I suppose we've been a part of the process for so long that we've kind of got, got past that. But, uh, but there was a sort of certain sense of um, trepidation, I suppose, at the beginning. Would they get it right? And, you know, because it's, it's, it's quite something to hand over some, a creation to somebody else to say, well, you, know, you can take it to the big screen. But, yeah. uh, so it must be so rewarding knowing that this, this tale and this bear is now going to be accumulating a whole new fan base as a result of this movie. And it just keeps the sort of... Paddington Bear sort of, it sort of continues the whole sort of legacy and it sort of carries on forever. I That's suppose. right. It brings Paddington to a whole new generation and also to other countries around the world because, of course, it's not just going to be shown in this country. So hopefully it will uh, bring him to many people who've never even heard of him before. Mm. So, but is, was there anything that you were really uh, adamant was sort of kept in? Any was that a stylistic choice or anything to do with the narrative that you really wanted to see in the movie? Well, there was one scene that wasn't in the original script um, and my father, in fact, was the one who and I, and I said the same thing, it was absolutely key, and that's where he goes to the station uh, cafe buffet, uh, and uh, we see him with Mr. Brown having, and, and my father felt that was very important to us, sort of establish his arrival. Yeah, because yeah. uh, I mean, your, your father has a cameo in the movie, so I assume yes. he's, a, he's a fan. Uh, <laughs> yeah, he's, uh, he's actually just sitting at a table, he raises a glass to Paddington as he drives past <laughs> in a taxi. Uh, and... Um, I was wondering, did you spend much time on set or did you head over to the set at all to sort of see it in production? I did. I, I did two or three set visits and uh, it actually struck me just how many people it takes to make a, make a film. I mean, I had no idea. You see the titles at the end of a film, but to actually see all of those people, uh, it's like a military operation. Mm. It's extraordinary. And was it almost quite touching to know that this many people were putting all this hard work and effort into something that was is, is been created by your own family? It, touching, also quite humbling, actually, um, because to, to us, you know, Paddington is just a part of the family. That so many people are involved was really yeah, quite exciting. And of course, the, the big sort of the big A list. I mean, they're always it's a fantastic cast. But I mean, Nicole Kidman's the kind of the huge draw. You must have been thrilled when you found that she was playing the antagonist. Extraordinary, and again, quite quite humbling to think somebody like that would you know want to be part of part of Paddington. But apparently, you know, she knew the books, and in fact, all of the stars in the film did. So it's lovely. Mm -hmm. And there's only, I mean. Just to, to sort of clear up the Wellington boots issue, because a lot of uh, people were wonder, are wondering where the boots are, but am I right in thinking that that was actually bought later on by a toy yes. manufacturer? A, a true fan of the books will know that he, Paddington didn't have, have his books in the early days. My father wrote them into a story. Following on from Shirley Clarkson de designing the soft toy, she put him into a pair of Wellington boots to make him stand up. And then my father subsequently wrote it into one of the Paddington stories. Oh. And are you pleased that the, in this film he's not wearing his boots? I am, boots? because he didn't wear his boots when he first arrived um, and he didn't have a duffel coat either. And again, he's first found on Paddington Station just with his hat and his label and his suitcase exactly the way he was in the first story in the first book. Yeah. And I was wondering, I mean, obviously... Is there scope that one day we might see him in his Wellington boots on the big screen? Is that, is that an idea that you'd be interested in? Well, I certainly think that there is scope to do uh, f more films, and so why not? I'm sure that if, he, if they are part of the story, they would put him in his Wellington boots. Yeah. And, and of course, I mean, uh, Paddington Bear has been translated into 30 languages, so something like 30 million copies. Yes. What do you think it is about, about this bear that's just so special and it's just, it resonates with so many kids and adults alike around the world? I think it's his character. P Paddington is actually very well-meaning. He's got a strong sense of right and wrong. He doesn't ever intentionally get himself into difficult situations, but we know he's going to. But we also know that whatever happens to him, it's going to come out all right in the end. And I think that is something that we can all relate to. We would all love to happen. And the same thing probably applies to people all over the world. And because, I mean, of course, and this is something that goes all the way back to his, his first conception, is this idea that he's 
almost, um, I mean, obviously he's a bear, but he's, he's almost playing the part of a, a foreigner going to a new world and sort of trying to adapt to a whole new culture, which is something that happens sort of every day. That's it right. must be quite nice that, you know, that that message is now being made very accessible to a sort of a broad audience because it's such, it's such a, a wonderful message to preach, this, that sort of idea of acceptance. It's lovely. It is wonderful. He is definitely a, a sort of a foreign person in, in, in a strange land, but he is accepted and warmly welcomed by, by the brands and by everybody in the end. And I think that that's lovely. And, and I mean, just also, I mean, Ben Wishaw does the, the character so much justice with a real sort of sincere sort of vocal turn. Uh, it, it must be wonderful to hear that. And is, is, how similar is that voice to the voice you might have pictured in your, in it, your own mind? It's kind of hard because whenever you've read something in a book, we all have our own um, idea. And I don't think even my father knew really what he sounded like. So when we heard Ben's voice, we suddenly thought, yep, yeah, that's it. He's got that innocence, that slightly quirky sound to his voice it's just perfect I, I, I was wondering as well when you watch uh, Paddington when you when you sort of sit down to watch are you able to get invested in the story and kind of immersed in this world in the same way that any sort of audience member would or is, are you almost too close to the production to be able to see it in those terms this is a, th that's quite a difficult I, I'm not really too sure I suppose you said no actually when I saw the film for the first time I did get immersed in it but I suppose I'm seeing it on a slightly different way to other people. But uh, I'm sure the more times I watch it, and it will be many times, the more immersed I will become in it. Uh, so just, uh, just finally, I was wondering what your favourite scene in the movie is. Is there a particular moment that you, you most enjoy watching? I think that's a, probably actually his arrival on the station when Mr Brown first sort of sees him, or the, the Brown's first him. I think that's probably my favourite moment. Brilliant. Well, thank you so much for your time today. It's been a real thank pleasure. You. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey You Guys! Hey You Guys, huh? Hey you guys, is that yeah. from the Goonies? It is indeed, yeah. Nice. Hey!